Good afternoon, everybody. Lenny, thank you so much for inviting me. I thank the organizers. So Danny came from Boston, 40 degrees. Actually, for the first time in LA, it's warmer than in Houston. We're 60 degrees over there. So I asked the permission from Lenny to change my talks. The topic of my talk, I want to discuss hyperceivad. I want to give an update. But for the first 10 minutes, I want to go beyond the hyperceivad. And then during the afternoon session, we'll have 30 minutes so I can discuss the hyperceivad update, the ongoing studies, and how we compare with the AYA uh, regimen. So, historically, despite the progress done in all ALL subgroups, still we're struggling with the elderly patient, and 50, then 50 and older are still elderly patients so far, according to the protocols we have. But things may change. In fact, these are the data from our database showing that still at five years, patients who are above 50, they do poorly with a 27% overall survival. Now, if you divide them even further by 45 to apply the YA regimen, we're still not doing so good among the group above 45 with an event-free survival and overall survival at three years, ranging about 40%. So what we can do to uh, overcome this problem, I want to talk about elderly patients defined by 60 and older, and hopefully in the next 10 years we move to 70. We reviewed our experience on 122 patients receiving the hyper CVAD with some dose adjustment, but essentially the hyper CVAD regimen. Well, the CR was good, 84%. Still, we do have mortality rate, not negligible, 10%. And 34% of these patients dying in CR from sepsis, from MDS, complications, MI, car accident, suicide, you name it. That being said, survival for this group of patients is still 15 months with a three-year survival of 20%. So definitely we need to do something in order to modify the outcome of this patient. The next, what we can do? Well, in the recent few years, we've seen the development of the monoclonal antibody. They work very well in a relapse setting. We have two drugs very potent. Eventually, can we combine these antibodies with the simplified schema of chemotherapy to avoid toxicities and improve the long-term survival and definitely having less deaths in CR. So several antibodies, they come with different flavors. We've used rituximab, although it's not approved for ALL, the naked antibody. Two of them are in most advanced stage of development, the inotuzumab ozagamycin combined with calichamycin anti-CD22 and the blinachumumab, the biallelic antibody, anti-CD19 and CD3. In summary, this works well. Uh, when given in a refractory relapse setting, inotuzumab is given at the beginning every three weeks, and now we move to a weekly schedule. Blina is given continuous infusion four weeks every six weeks. We've seen responses in half of these patients, yet these responses were not so durable. And toxicities, with inotuzumab, we've seen the VOD. With the Blina, we've seen CNS toxicities. Just to take you back to the Eno trial, at the beginning, we used the one infusion every three weeks at 1.8 milligram per meter square, up to eight cycles. We've treated 49 patients. We've seen responses in 50%. Median duration of response was around six months, 5.7 months. However, we did face the problem of VOD, especially that some of these patients did receive a lot of chemotherapy that can affect the liver, not a lot of them asparaginase, Dr. Dewar. They received clofarabine or others. They went to transplant as well, and we did see VOD. Went back, based on the PK data, we think that weekly regimen can be given. In fact, we modified our subsequent trial to give weekly, three weeks every four weeks, starting with 0.8 milligram per meter square on week one, then 0.5 on week two and week three, which is 40 patients. We've seen similar responses and less VOD. And here is a summary of the results in a phase two studies, two subsequent phase two studies, 49 patients with a monthly uh, infusion and the weekly uh, schedule, we've seen similar responses, 57 and 59 uh, percent. We did see longer days of response with the weekly regimen, although it's not significant. And based on this data, we tried to incorporate the weekly schedule in our uh, future studies. 
Then we compare this data with the historical data at MD Anderson, compa comparing to other chemotherapy, among them the MOAD, clofarabine, and other regimen, where they see higher responses with the inotuzumab and a safer regimen. Similarly, at the same time, the blinatumab was ongoing in a phase two study. They did a phase two uh, in Europe, and then the confirmatory trial in the US and Europe. The study was, pre the results were presented by Dr. Tops at the last ASCO and EHA meeting, and the drug is awaiting an approval by the FDA. Similar results, 43% response rate, duration of response six months, less than the first trial. In this subsequent trial, more patients in second salvage and beyond were enrolled. Therefore, we said since patient, elderly patients, they do poorly, they do die in CR, can we combine these antibodies with the hyper CVAD regimen? No, it's not hyper CVAD anymore, it's hyper CVD because we decided to remove the intracyclines. So we simplified this schema by removing the intracycline and by reducing by 50% the dose of cyclophosphamide, dexamethasone, and vincristin, and we further reduce the dose of the hydrocytarabine and metrixate by 75% metrixate, and we use the inotuzumab in combination with this regimen. Here, a summary of the protocol as is right now. The mini hyper CVD, eight courses, cyclophosphamide, 50% dose reduction, dexamethasone, 50% dose reduction as well. I remind you, it's 40 milligram in hyper CVAD. No intracyclines, metrotexate, 75% dose reduction, and cytarabine was reduced as well. Patients do get inotuzumab 1.8 milligram per minute square on day three of the first course, and we subsequently reduce it to 1.3 in, in course two, three, and four. Rituximab can be given to patients who have CD20 expression, and we kept the intratecal chemotherapy eight uh, intratecal uh, treatments, and then the pump maintenance for three years. So far, we've treated 27 patients in the frontline trial. We'll present this data at the ASH meeting. Median age was 68, and we have patients up to 79 years old. Uh, they had good carotab deployed. We did not enroll in this trial somebody with Philadelphia chromosome positivity. CD20 expression was universal, and uh, 15 patients did have CD20 expression above 20% the cutoff use in this trial, and therefore received rituximab in addition to the uh, regimen. Here the responses so far. 96% objective response rate. Only one patient did not respond. In patients with abnormal karyotype, all of them achieved the complete response. MRD status assessed by flow. Overall, it was 100%. At CR, 77% did achieve an MRD negativity. With a follow-up of 12 months today, here are the couple of minor curves. With the three years event-free survival, it's about 80%, although uh, none of, I mean, the follow-up is still short. As I said, the median has not been reached. Same for overall survival. Now, the question then came, is this regimen better than the hyper CVAD that we use for this patient? Here, a comparison. Two prospective trials compared in a retrospective fashion. You see the difference favoring the new regimen, or what we call the mini hyper CVD, plus, you know, compared to the hyper CVAD. The p-value is not significant, but we see a trend for a better uh, improvement favoring this new combination. Obviously, the follow-up is short. We, keep, uh, we need to wait for this data to further mature. We use this trial as well in patients with refractory lapse disease. At the beginning, we used single agent ino and blinatumumab, and here we, have, we amended the trial to enroll patients with refractory disease. Uh, they were enrolled, we, I'll show you a little here, on 21 patients, 21 patients enrolled. We have, we're enrolling more patients. We have an update at the ASH meeting. We have 76% response rate, and we had some early deaths happening from sepsis. Now, one thing I did not show here, with a frontline trial, we had only one case of VOD. In a second-line trial, we did see four cases of VOD. So one should be very careful when you give this drug to avoid any other drug that can cause hepatotoxicities, especially if you have somebody who failed already transplantation. They may not be a good candidate to receive such a combination. Here, the survival curve, obviously in the refractory setting, it's worth it's seven months compared to 5.7 months with a single agent inotuzumab. 
So that being said, where we're going at MD Anderson uh, today, in a Burkitt disease, we have the hypercephate of atumumab, but we're using uh, the NIH uh, protocol, the dose-adjusted EPOC, in combination with uh, rituximab or ofotumumab, particularly if you have somebody with double head Burkitt leukemia, CD20 positive ALL. Today, the hypercephate of ofotumumab is our standard of care. We may replace the liposomal vinc uh, vincristin with the liposomal vincristin. For patients who are pH was ALL, our standard of care today is hypercephate ponatinib, and we may be able to select patients who may not need a transplantation to be given in first CR. T cell ALL, hypercephate narabine, the question for narabine, where to put narabine in this sequence of treatment early on or later during the maintenance therapy, although we're using it after four course of hypercephate. In young, in adolescent and young adults, we come back to the debate in the afternoon. Essentially today, to make it simple, 30 years and older and younger, they get the augmented BFM and ofatimumab, above 30 years old, hypercevad-based regimen, and above 60, mini hypercevad and inotuzumab. We're using the combination of the new antibodies to be incorporated in our regimen. MRD positivity in the US hopefully will have a BLINA trial for these patients who recur at the molecular level, or who remains MRD positivity after consolidation or 12 weeks of treatment. We don't give uh, radiation therapy, craniospinal radiation. Uh, we adjust, we personalize the treatment for regular risk hyper CVAD 8 intraticle with Burkitt 16, and with pH positive ALL, we do 12 intraticle uh, therapy. Moving forward, we have trials that are about to start in pH pH-like uh, disease where we're combining hyper CVAD plus uh, TKIs, ML expression profile, high dose RSE or AML-based regimen, epigenic modulations, the cytobine SGI110, flitri ITD using flitri inhibitors, and rixotinib in combination uh, with the hyper CVAD for patients who may have some expression involving essentially the JEC2 or jec 2 like mutations. With that, I will stop here, and we'll come back in the afternoon for the hyper -CV. Thanks.